Good morning, everybody. It's Friday the 20th of November. We're here for our 51st assembly and we've got lots of great things to talk about. I hope you're all well on this frosty Friday morning. I had to scrape the ice off the car this morning and uh, I think we've got lots of great things to talk about. So let's get started with birthdays, shall we? I want to say a big happy birthday this week to two children, two friends, who had a birthday on the very same day. Maya and Millie in Poplar's class both have a birthday on the very same day, and it was lovely to hear what presents you got. Um, I didn't know, Millie, that you've been practicing on your ukulele already, so if you get good at that tune that Dad's been helping you with, then you could film it and we could put it in one of the assemblies. So in, uh, I heard about your, your big bike with your, with your name on it, and may I heard about your cave club dolls. I didn't know about those, actually. I, I know about lots of the dolls and Sylvanian families and Barbies and the kindy kids and all sorts of things, but cave club, cave club dolls were new to me. So I've had a little look at them. They look pretty snazzier, so I hope you enjoy playing with them. And there's a few more birthdays to talk about next week, but that's all for this week. So shall we jump on to house points and see who has won the house point trophy for this week? Who is on the leaderboard? So we've got some real progress this week. Very close in a couple of cases. Let's jump to who is in fourth place this week. In fourth place, it's sad to say it, but Dragons, you're in fourth place with 227 points. But right next to you in third place are the Serpents with 228 points. Into second place, Phoenixes with 248 points. Uh, something magical has happened in the Eagles again this week. With 289 points, you have got 103 house points in one week, which is quite remarkable. So you've jumped to the top of the leaderboard when you were languishing down in third place just a few weeks ago. Shows how quickly things can turn around. One good week really does mean a lot. So it's, it's, uh, it's also time for me to say a big well done. But first, before I say a well done to some people for their 25 points, I need to say a big sorry. I've already said it to you in class, Isla, but I double counted your 25s last week, didn't I? I gave you a 25 point certificate because I was so astonished that you'd jump straight into 50 house points. I just thought you were on 25 again because I was rushing around doing a quick job and I didn't stop to, to realise on our grid that you've got to 50 house points. You're the first person in the school. I'm ever so sorry, but you've got your certificate now and a big congratulations. First person at Sibsi to reach the 50 individual house points. You are a brilliant role model. I'm not surprised, but I am really impressed. So other people who hit the big milestone of 25 this week in Maple's class, a big well done to Lucas and Oscar and Akshaj and Poppy and Skylar. Congratulations, 25 individual house points is brilliant. And in the Poplar's class, the first three, Poppy Leak, well done, and Millie and Ella, fantastic. So you two do everything together, you hit 25 house points together. So congratulations to you all this week. And I know there's a few more that are coming or just got them, but then uh, they'll be ready for next week's assembly and I'll be able to award you to them then. So a huge well done to everybody for the amount of money that you raised for children in need last week. £150 was raised at school to send on to children who are in need. So congratulations, well done for you there. Also, it was great to have the pantomime in this week. So I wanted to say a big, a big uh, thank you to the company who did it, but also well done for being such a terrific audience. There's my phone. That's gonna feature in the assembly now, Mrs. Felipez. <laughs> okay, um, so now I want to uh, announce a couple of things about Christmas because Christmas is getting closer and closer. I know somebody in Poplars yesterday who I was talking to thought it was a long time away and it might feel like a long time away, but it is coming fast. So not long to go to Christmas, only just over a month. So we need to get going in what our Christmas activities are because we've only got a few weeks left of school. It's, it's crazy to think about it, but we've only got a few weeks left until we break up on the Thursday, the 17th of December. 
So let's talk about some of the things we're doing to celebrate Christmas in school. So you are not going to bring Christmas cards into school, okay? That's the first thing to say, and I think teachers have already told you that. We're not gonna bring Christmas cards into school because it's really important that we try and limit all the things that we're bringing into school. That's one of the things that's keeping us safe at the moment, only bringing in things that are really essential when we can. But that doesn't mean we can't celebrate Christmas uh, cards at all. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to offer you something slightly different. And I'll put the um, information on Mr. Wright's Google Classroom for parents so that they can uh, they can see that as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to say if you want to record a Christmas message at home with mum or dad, then parents can film you saying a Christmas message to who you want to say it to, and then they can send it to me either by email or by WeTransfer, that's another way to send emails, uh, send video clips for free. Um, and I will pick them up and I'll put them into our assemblies from the 1st of December right the way through to when we break up, I'll put some of your messages. You might want to say a message to the whole school. You might want to send a message to some of your friends or you might want to film a message to uh, some of the teachers or a bit of a mixture of people. But you can film a little Christmas message and you can record it, send it in and I will put it onto the assemblies. So that's how we're going to celebrate uh, instead of bringing in cards. Now, also, I've got another piece of uh, a piece of work which I think is really important, and this is going to be some. Uh, this is going to be your homework, not this coming week, but next week, and it's going to be everybody's homework across the school because I've been thinking about how lonely some people are. And I've heard some news today on the radio that actually people who are not able to see their family and friends are at the loneliest point now, even more than, than when they were in March when they had the lockdown. So people are, some people are really, really struggling. And I had that thought as well as having talked to Mrs. Balderston, who was coming up with a bit of an idea of how to... Uh, cheer up some of the people in the care homes that haven't been able to see some of their friends and family. So put all these little ideas together and what we want to do is we want you to either draw a picture or write a letter or both to some people who are lonely at Christmas. Now these will go to some of the lonely people um, or, or people who haven't had been able to see some friends and family um, in Sibsey. Also, there is a care home at Woodall Spa called Westerly Care Home, and we're going to send some of our letters and pictures up there. And we're going to, through our, our, our governor, Mr. Atterby, who's our very kind governor, who's able to get these messages out to over 100 people in the area in Boston, we're going to spread some love and just remember how lucky we are and how nice it is to be thinking about other people at this time of Christmas. So we're going to write a little letter. Maybe your letter will say who you are, um, what kind of things you like to do, what sort of things your favourite things are. If you've got some pets, if you've got who your family are, some fun things about you and what you're looking forward to doing this Christmas. I'll do a little bit of an example letter as well for you. But you don't have to think about that right now. That is coming up next week. OK. And that will be your homework across the whole school. And I'll tell you how we can uh, deliver that as well. All right, because we'll be writing them on paper and we'll be posting them in the, in the school post box outside the gates. Uh, OK, so we've also got for Christmas, we've had the, the pantomime, which we talked about, which was really good fun. Uh, not quite the same as having a pantomime with lots of actors and actresses in, but still fun, nevertheless. Um, and we've also got the friends uh, of Sibsi have got lots of little activities planned. So we're still planning to have a few bits and bobs, which we'll talk to you about as we go on closer to Christmas. But this one's an exciting competition. I want you to be looking out for uh, this at the weekend. I think it's going to come onto the Friends Facebook page on Sunday. So it's the 12 days of Christmas. There's going to be a raffle. So what you're going to do is you're going to parents are going to buy tickets if they want to take part, buy tickets uh, each day. They can buy tickets and then on from the 1st of December onwards, there will be a raffle draw and a prize awarded to that family for 12 days. So an advent calendar of prizes and there's going to be some great prizes up for grabs. So if you want to find out more about that one and being within a chance to win Sunday night, I think the poster will be coming out onto the Friends Facebook page. OK, now 
I would also like to do a little shout out to Logan and Isla who have set up a little business in Logan's house. It is a, a pet grooming business and it started very well. Those of us that are old enough to remember the Dulux adverts, see that big Dulux dog, that's all you can think of when you see a big dog like that. Uh, but Logan and Isla have spent an inordinate amount of hours looking after this dog. Now, you can tell it's not a real dog, but it is a very important pet because it's very well groomed. And Logan said to me the other day that he feels tired some mornings but by the time he gets to school because he spent so long looking after it. Uh, so I was really impressed with that. These types of emails from mums and, and dads that are coming in are really just what we need. It's just a little bit of fun and it's a little bit of entertainment in a time when everybody is a little bit worried and a little bit concerned especially when they see how uh, things like there's a lot of cases in the area. We are still trying to keep as bright and bubbly as possible. So I want to thank parents that send us these little messages in because it means the world to the school community to keep us buoyed and I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much. Okay, let's have a look at attendance. I'm not sure if this is the first time, but I think it could be the first time. Cedars, you have won it with, I think, a very high score. Was it Was it 99% attendance? You can see on the screen there, 99% uh, is pretty close to 100. You couldn't get much better. Well done to you. So, Maple's feeling a little bit left out this morning, but it's gone to Cedars. I'll be bringing that down shortly. And then, before we get onto our winner's wall, finally, I want to announce another thing that we're starting next week. Now, this is if you can do it, okay? So we've got a little poster here for you to have a look at. This is an active travel award. We're trying to get an active travel award starting on Monday. If you can get as many people at Sibsey School to run, walk, bike, scoot to school and not use the car, then we could apply and try and win the active travel award. So starting from Monday the 23rd of November and ending when we break up for Christmas, I'd like us to try and go every day that you possibly can to school by walking, just maybe walking that little bit longer. Now, I would also encourage parents to try and park up at the village hall and walk down to school if they can. So that would be really, really good. So let's try and see what we can do. Mrs Wheeler set this one up for us and we are going to track in every class who is biking, scooting, scootering, walking the most to school. So let's see which class comes out on top. It's a challenge between all of you now and the gauntlet has been laid. So good luck to all of you. Some of you, you can't bike to school. You can't walk to school. You live too far away or it's not safe and we do get that. But if you can, go for it. All right, now let's move on to our winners. So let's start off this week in reverse order. Let's start off with Cedars. William Bashford. Well, it's a lovely, lovely opportunity to award this lovely young man. And William, you've been awarded this because you are just yourself. And I think it's, it's uh, something to recognise, William, that there are lots of people who are lovely in the world and you are definitely one of them. You're an all round kind hearted, uh, supportive person. You're offering friendship to your peers, but you're also offering support to Mrs. Lomas and Mrs. Crozier and Miss Padley. You are happy to help. You are willing to help and you are a very, very nice young man. So congratulations to you. In the Oaks class, Aidan, I'm really pleased to say congratulations to you. Aidan, you have been impressed, Mrs. Robinson and Mrs. Metcalf, some of your extra work in maths. You've been doing some more work on fractions in the afternoons and you were so proud of yourself that at the end, you just smiled, dusted your hands and pretty much walked away. It was a bit like a mic drop for you. So well done to you. Um, and into Maple's class, Megan Holmes, lovely award for somebody who's such a great role model. Well done, Megan. Always doing the right thing at the right time and you're kind to everybody else. Megan, it's not just your friends, it's a bit like William, it's also the teachers. You are a really, really good example. You try hard in your work, you listen well, and not, not only that, but you've written a fantastic setting description this week using lots of expanded noun phrases and fronted adverbials. So well done to you. Moving down into the Redwoods class. We know this happens sometimes. I keep saying it, but it keeps happening. Siblings, have a good week. 
Joe Cockagoring, well done to Joe. Joe, you've been impressing Mr. Flynn and Miss Bellamy this week. You've been so hard, working so hard. Um, you have been brilliant, really trying so hard in your maths and your handwriting. You're settling so well, Joe, and doing as much as you possibly can to make great progress. So we're really proud of you and you should feel very proud of yourself. Congratulations. And now we move down into the poplars class. So Mrs. Wheeler has chosen Bernice. This is a lovely reason. Bernice is exceptionally kind. She always asks to see if she can look after people or support somebody who might be feeling a little bit upset or might be feeling less confident than her. And she looks after those people, all sorts of different situations. Um, uh, she, she knew, for example, that a child that might get nervous going into the pantomime. So Bernice, you offer to sit next to them and look after them. And I think that's the kind of thing that makes a really lovely person. So you should be incredibly proud of yourself. And we are very proud of you. Congratulations this week. And finally, we end up with a cup of tea. Priscilla, you were following instructions and using amazing vocabulary when you were making yourself a cup of tea this, this week. And it looks like a lovely one too. So next time I'm down there, I'll have a coffee, please. Thank you very much. Have a lovely Friday, everybody.